the Buddha said that wisdom must come only from the abandonment of selfish craving or desire. One who abandons that desire attains nirvana, which is supreme peace, liberation. Nirvana means in Sanskrit, blow out. That is, exhale the breath. The opposite desire is to breathe in. Now, if you breathe in and hold it, you lose your breath. But if you breathe out, it comes back to you. So the principle here is, if you want life, don't cling to it. Let go. But the problem is, if I desire not to desire, is that not already desire? How can I desire not to desire? How can I surrender myself when myself is precisely an urge to hold on, to cling? So it all comes down to this basic question that human beings have for a long, long time been concerned about transforming their minds. Is there any way in which one's mind can be transformed? Or is it simply a process which is nothing more than a vicious circle? Now in this question, can I improve me? There is the obvious difficulty that if I am in need of improvement, the person who's going to do the improving is the one who needs to be improved. And there immediately we have a vicious circle. See, we're always doing that. We're always finding a way to be one up. And by the most incredibly subtle means. So you see that, you see? And you say, I realize I'm always doing that. Now tell me, how do I not do that? I say, why do you want to know? <laughs> well, I'd be better that way. Yeah, but why do you want to be better? You see, the reason you want to be better is the reason why you aren't. Shall I put it like that? See, because sometimes doing good to others and even doing good to oneself is amazingly destructive. Because it's full of conceit. How do you know what's good for other people? How do you know what's good for you? If you say, uh, you want to improve, then you ought to know what's good for you. But obviously you don't, because if you did, you would be improved. So we don't know. Lao Tzu, the Chinese philosopher, said, the highest virtue is not virtue, and therefore really is virtue translated uh, in more of a periphrastic way. The highest virtue is not conscious of itself as virtue and therefore really is virtue. Lower virtue is so self-conscious that it's not virtue. So in a way the moral or the immoral of <laughs> these considerations is that if you are really aware of your own inner workings, you will realize there's nothing you can do to improve yourself. Because you don't know what better is. So, what instead, therefore, if we see that you can't outwit yourself, you can't be designedly spontaneous, and you cannot be genuinely loving. 
by intending to love. So you say, well, I ought to be honest. That's, that's the beginning of, oh, so many lies you can't imagine. Suppose we're stuck with it. So, could we look at things in that way? Without, as it were, fixing labels and names and gradations and judgments on everything. But watch what happens. Watch what we do. And it may be that when you are in this way freed from busybodiness and being out to improve everything, that your own nature will begin to take care of itself. <laughs>